Let's do some news! My name is Mike B. This is the lovely chat, and that's Sunday. All right, you guys saw our butthole for a second there. Toss! Uh, today is June 21st, 2019. I am, uh, I'm recovering from, uh, uh from, uh, my latest battle with, with, uh, my, what was it, chronic, what do we call it, chronic something? Chronic condition, uh, uh, uh pleurisy. And it wiped me out on Wednesday, and I'm still, I'm still pretty wiped out. Uh, I just feel, uh, tired, low energy. So, so, I'm gonna try to put it all together. Chronic gut, shut up, Cogni. All right. So, 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 I'm recovering from the chronic. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it is, it is the week after E3. I think, yeah. Um... And so there's not like a whole lot of like, like, yeah, there's not like a ton of like, like news news. Like a lot of the stuff that we have talked and discussed today is more like ongoing discussions about things. Right. Um, and the first one is, uh, basically we're going to touch, uh, drop in and take a look at the ongoing discussion of loot boxes where EA and Epic specifically Sean Campbell, the UK country manager at EA, he basically runs everything uh, uh, for the UK and represents the UK um, uh, for EA. Uh, Kerry Hopkins, who's the VP of Legal and Government Affairs at EA. Matthew Weisinger, Director of Marketing at Epic. Cannon Pence, General Counsel at Epic. Versus the Department of Digital Culture, Media, and Sport which is uh, summarized as DCMS, which is a council put together by uh, the, the uh, UK Parliament. And their job is to basically investigate things related to, as the name would suggest, digital, culture, media, and sports. So, they had a nice long discussion with the folks that I mentioned. Uh, and the majority of the talk was well, a lot of like kind of skirting some of the things. We did get a couple of good tidbits. <laughs> As you can see in the title here, EA says they're not loot boxes, they're surprise mechanics. And I actually went through and I watched the damn thing, and it was quite interesting to watch because they were really they were really not shying away from asking these dudes whatever they needed to ask in order to get uh, um we'll get to get answers to 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 a point. Now I understand, you know, they're politicians, so they don't really they don't really know how to ask pointed questions that actually give a direct, get a direct answer. Um, so, and I also don't know how to give. Um, but we did get, again, like a couple of good interesting tidbits here. Let me actually go ahead and find the first one. It's at 1535. Uh, this is actually just general talk. I'm actually go to 1543. So you can actually hear um, uh, from the horse's mouth. Um, let me see. 43 and 30. Here we go. It's, it's, you can't really bookmark each individual one. I could really make like clips or anything like that. Surprise, you have less money. Exactly. But it was, it's a very lengthy conversation where they basically sat down and they asked them a number of questions, uh, everything related to how do they track, what kind of information do they track for, uh, for their, um, uh, their player base? Uh, do they, do they do anything to prevent people from becoming addicted? They brought up the World Health Organization's, uh, um, uh, ruling that gaming addiction is indeed a disease. Uh, we talked about this last week. Remember, you have to be, you have to basically be removed from, you have to basically be, hold on, let me pause real quick because we're at the part here. You have to basically be removed from, uh, uh, from society in, in a sense for the period of at least one year and then be, a, then be diagnosed by a doctor with having a uh, video game addiction. So that was brought up a number of times during this hearing and each time they deflected because they, they don't believe that what they're doing is in any way, shape, or form related to gambling. So, of course, they don't feel that addiction is involved. Therefore, the, question, uh, the, 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 uh, um, the ruling that the WHO <clears throat> uh, came up with about gambling addiction does not apply. This is why this, is, this, is why this conversation kind of went uh, in circles. Uh, let me actually go ahead and turn this up a little bit. Should have a code of ethics. Do a little bit of. Uh, we've heard a lot of evidence in this committee from. It's very poorly mic'd, and so. Others that loot boxes are closely linked to problem gambling, particularly among adolescents. 
Can I ask you, both companies, do you consider loot boxes to be a, an, an ethical feature of your games? Kerry? Well, first, we don't call them loot boxes. I think that was... Whatever a, term but, you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So what we look at as as surprise mechanics. No. Um, but I think it's important to look at this. He so, uh, if, yeah. if you go to, if you go to a, uh, I don't know what your version of Target is, but a, a store that sells a lot of toys, and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And so it's, it's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA, of course, is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun, enjoyable to people. Um, we agree with the UK Gambling Commission, the Australian Gambling Commission, and many other gambling commissions that they aren't gambling. And we also disagree that there's evidence that shows it leads to gambling. Instead, we think it's like many other products that people enjoy in a very healthy way uh, and like the element of surprise. Okay, so just to be absolutely clear, <coughs> your loot boxes or surprise mechanics, you have no ethical qualms whatsoever with. Uh, so I, I think you're recharacterizing my language. What I said is I think the way we've implemented our FIFA Ultimate Team Packs is ethical. Okay, other than FIFA and, and other games that you provide. So she's she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna go she's gonna go into more detail here. That's that's uh, Carrie Hopkins. She's the VP of uh, of Legal and Government Affairs for uh, for EA. So so she her and also um, uh, uh, Canon Pence. Uh, they're they're very careful with their wording on certain things because they're lawyers, so they're going to uh, do whatever they can to make sure they don't necessarily paint themselves into a corner. Um, <clears throat> so as she mentioned, she's likening the um, the loot boxes, or sorry, the surprise mechanics, uh, to the same uh, this basically likening them to the same mechanics available when you go to the store and you buy a hatchimal or something. Now, if you don't know what a hatchimal is. Uh, Hatchimal is basically, it's a little egg that you can buy, and then over uh, a period of time or whatever, eventually it will hatch, and like the, a little something will come out. You don't know what's inside, that's the whole point. You have no idea what's inside, um, but it's kind of like a Furby, except like, you don't actually see what color Furby, Furby it is, you know? It's just like, you basically get the egg, and then you love it and shit, it starts making noise and everything, and then bloop, and they, they pop out. Um, so she's likening it to that. Now we've discussed loot boxes before. Uh, and we've tried to compare them to um, buying a pack of uh, baseball cards or something, or magic cards. You don't know what's inside the magic cards. Remember, the stick of gum is the guaranteed value that you get from buying, which is why there's a stick of gum in all these things, right? That's how you get around the gambling part of, uh, uh, of um, baseball packs. Uh, and so that's how we kind of summarize that. It was like, okay, well, there's, there's a guaranteed value there. Well, they also say there's guaranteed value in their, uh, in their surprise mechanics. Uh, and so, so... I see already in chat that my co-host is uh, uh, is already trying to trying to d distance itself, right? Yeah, it's a weird angle um, to compare a digital item versus a physical item. Um, gum isn't in sports cards anymore. Oh, they're not. They don't do that anymore. Oh well, damn. Uh, <laughs> let's see. A uh, blind box toys. Yes, yeah, blind box toys. They're already in corner. See, they keep, there are uh, LOL cases that are a hundred bucks. Yeah, the fact that they need someone just to talk. To government to discuss surprise mechanics should really show you something's definitely wrong. Well, I mean, the, this is the government um, actually doing the research on this so they can better understand some of these things so they can implement uh, actual legislation that will uh, either enforce or not enforce these things. And later on during this discussion, they do actually say that EA, uh, EA says that it has a duty to care to its users, but it doesn't want to be legally held to that. The quote is, I do think we have a duty to our game players and we take that responsibility very seriously, but legally, I don't, I don't not feel like this is the place to discuss whether there is a legal requirement. Uh, so they're, they're, they don't want, they're not here because they, they feel like they need to, um, they're not here to discuss any kind of government oversight uh, into how they build out their video game mechanics for surprise mechanics, I should say. Um, 
they're they're saying we're just here to help. I mean, it says here, this is why we are participating in this consultation is because they're not there to uh, to discuss any kind of uh, government oversight into this. Which which it's it's this is kind of this is something that I feel like even us here like we're not going to really like as a whole. I don't think we could all like really kind of draw the same conclusions of what we think would be the best. Like is government uh, oversight the best thing for this, or do we really want? Do I, or do we would we prefer the government not to get involved with? Uh, with with regulating video games as a whole excuse me um the government isn't uh, is just trying to figure out its own percentage of the profits <laughs> I mean, maybe uh i'm gonna get some flack for this but don't hate on the lawyer we need lawyers willing to defend both sides of our legal systems to work exactly no no yeah exactly um i agree the uh, loot box is not essential to any game mechanic unless you build your game around them at that point it's hard to avoid it yeah no that's true I mean, it, it's true. I, uh, you know, it, it's there once was a uh, once upon a time you could get cosmetics in video games simply by playing the game. Oh man, I unlocked this uh, this this you know hat or some shit. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I unlocked this emblem or something, or I found this special armor like in Mass Effect. I found a special armor uh, by doing this whole crazy thing. And you used to get these cosmetic up there upgrades, you know, or not upgrades, but uh, cosmetic, you know, things, or just like even upgrades or whatever, uh, just like playing the game. And now with the introduction of loot boxes, developers have to balance. So, okay, well, maybe instead of allowing those things to be free in the game where people could just earn them, we should like make a profit on them because people will go out of the way to, to play to get those things, which means they'll probably go out of the way to pay to avoid having to actually play to, uh, to earn those things like that. You better get several loot boxes in game for free. Yeah, exactly. It's just a cash card. Exactly. Exactly, Elder. I'm just saying, I'm on the same page. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's collect the 10 green coins, unlock green pants. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, unfortunately, you know, unless there's like an alternate timeline somewhere where we ban loot boxes, like right from the get go, and we can see exactly how video game industry has developed without them, there's really no way to determine whether or not, um, loot boxes have, and we could all, you could, we could all pretty much assume that it has, uh, has had a negative impact on, um, I guess on the amount of actual customizable and bonus and Easter egg material and stuff, the content that you get in games. Sure. We could all just say, yeah, for sure. But we don't really know how much, uh, remember that those models started with mobile with all the assets purchasable for gems. The issue isn't even loot boxes is getting multiple of the same item. That is the issue. Yeah. Well, a lot, a lot of games have like a system to prevent that. But you're right, like the system to prevent that, or not prevent that, but to um, uh, to remedy that or compensate for that. But a lot of times the compensation, it has like basically zero value. Like think about dust in Hearthstone. Like, come on. Um, <laughs> it's like, come, come on, man. Uh, just stop buying games with this bullshit. But it's all of them. It's like so many of them. Uh, some guy got his records from uh, EA under GDPR. He spent $10,000 over two years in the Ultimate Team Packs. Well... I'm not surprised. I spent a significant amount of money on Warframe. Despite getting a lot of free shit from them when I was a partner, I still spent a ton of money on it. Um, I can't imagine what some other folks would have. Yeah, you will never play a game again. Yeah, and just to go a little bit farther here, they do, I mean, like I said, they, they do kind of touch up on a lot of things. Uh, they later actually discuss, uh, let's see, 15, 40, 54, 50, 54. Actually, almost there just by talking. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, where are we at? 15, 50, okay, 15, 54. 30, all right. There's also uh, an article in, in uh, Business Insider about the, uh, what was described as a brutal work culture in your, in your organization, with people being forced to work up to 100 hours a week. It, 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 have you got any response to that? I don't know. I'm aware of the article. Um, I'm not aware of anybody who's been forced to work. Uh, I do know that Fortnite became this global phenomenon at a relatively small company at the time and that for many people like myself um, recognized just what a tremendous uh, kind of once in a generation experience this was and wanted to see it fulfill the ultimate level of success as much as it could and so people like myself and Canon worked really hard to make sure that the game met its full potential. 
I'm sure you did. I mean, I commend you for your hard work. But but, but it's the people who have a, no choice um, whether to work or not that the, the article was referring to. You're not aware of Mr. Pence. Is this something that you would respond to if it was a, a, a calumny? Yeah, we. I, I do. I'm aware of the article, and we did actively respond to the article. Um, in its and you refute it. It's not accurate. Yeah, certainly. There's. We, we, this is not some sweatshop where people are. You know, some managers are standing behind people um, with weapons, forcing people to work. Absolutely not. You know, as Matt said, it took everyone by surprise, and obviously, there's an enormous amount of hard work associated with that, um, and everybody did their part. Um, and we recognize that um, we really need to take active measures to um, make sure that we have a healthy and sustainable workplace. So we are working on that, and we continue to do so. Um, Wait, can we? But no, I would not. It's absolutely not true that anyone is or has ever been forced to do a hundred-hour work. <coughs> okay, because can we talk about this lady's water bottle holder thing? What the fuck is that? Look at this crazy thing. Measures to, to, um, make sure that what the fuck a, is that? Everybody did their part. Um, and we recognize that. It's a bottle. It's a bondage bottle. I like the bondage bottle, actually. Look at that. Wow. I, I've never seen anything like that. Weird. Uh, but I mean, I guess if you if you drink the same bottle of water every day, I guess sure, makes sense, makes sense. it's a hemp shoulder strap. That's what it is. Um, I, I believe that actually. Yeah, that's some um, that's some white people shit right there. Caught by the auto mod. Ha! Uh, it's a bottle sling. She's trying to show she's metal. Yes. Uh, wow, how weird. Interesting. I I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. It does look like it does look like a like a shibari or uh or sabari shibari, shibari uh or bondage rope style of thing. Anyway, so uh. So obviously he's going to categorically deny that anybody was forced to work overtime um, during that during uh, the period when uh, when Fortnite was was growing in popularity at at an exponential rate, uh, and we should all recognize the fact that yes, Fortnite went from basically nothing to being a massive hit, like it was a failed game uh, until they basically ditched the Save the World, uh, the Orcs Must Die style gameplay uh, section, and they just basically flipped out all the assets and made a, a, a Battle Royale. And then, and then just, just basically blew up. Uh, and so, so they're basically saying that we, we recognize that, you know, people had to work hard in order to make this stuff happen, but nobody was forced to do it. No one's gonna, they're not gonna sit here and say, yeah, you know, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe... Maybe we did kind of tell some folks that this shit needed to be done if they wanted to, you know, continue working for the company. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. Of course, they were not forced. Exactly, Draven. They were just heavily encouraged with keeping their jobs in place. So had a choice, but the choice was a bad one. Yeah, I, 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 I would believe for sure that there are some folks who were told, um, you know, that we have to get this done. And that's, a, that's the way to say it. You know, hey, you know, we have to get this done. Uh, and we have to get this done before Monday. And yeah, I know it's Friday, but we have to get this done before Monday. Um, I, I myself have been a part of uh, a management team that actually has done that before uh, at Zam. Uh, it wasn't necessarily something that I fully agreed with, but I also didn't understand, like, I guess I really didn't fully understand the ramifications of certain things because, well, <laughs> because I was the one doing the fucking work. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's something that happens at every level of almost yeah, of every industry. Uh, it even happened when I was working for the fucking phone sex and psychics place. You know, it's like we have a product that we need to shape and get, and get like ready and, and, you know, get specced and get built and get out and, uh, on dev or on live or something. Uh, and we had we had to work to get it done. And it, we were just we were just told, like, hey, you know, we have to get this done. We have to get this done by by such and such a date. And so we, they never told us, never told me, hey, you have to work the weekend in order to make this happen. It was just heavily implied. So, of course, when they, they're asked the question, they're not, they're not going to say, you know, oh, well, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we make, we fucking make people work overtime. We have, we have to in order to make these deadlines. What do, what do you want us to do? Move the deadline back? Get out. Um, it happens every industry. Yeah, uh, I mean, it isn't industry crunch time normal with most game studios? God of War, RDR2, higher up set time frame. You do it or you attempt to. I mean, 
Yeah, industry crunch time is a norm. Uh, it's very, it's planning, planning these milestones and planning these like set releases for like certain versions of a build or something like that, especially when you're releasing a very complex product is very, very difficult to do. It's very, very hard to like build out a timeline, even three months in advance where it's like, okay, this is what we plan on doing. And we think we can hit every single one of these milestones, unless you like severely like under 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 schedule <laughs> like it's basically planned like oh you know what uh it'll take us three months to build something that would normally take you a month like unless you deal with every single product but then then the problem is that when it's like okay maybe we under promise over deliver then um that will that'll be great because we'll feel more like we're, we're getting more accomplished we're making things work we don't feel like we're always behind we could take time on certain things uh but the problem is then when you submit that roadmap to your investors which you have to do when you submit that roadmap to investors they're gonna they, they will look at it and say why can't you guys get this done in this certain amount of time because they don't fucking know right they yeah they pick up the roadmap and they just say I feel like you guys should be able to get this done in like a month or two. Like I could just hire some dudes in Brazil and they'll do this shit like right away. And this is a very fucking real thing. I'm not just fucking pulling Brazil out of my ass, right? Uh, like this is a very real thing. Um, and that's the way that they, that they essentially like, you know, they look at some of this, uh, uh, uh you know, game dev or, or any kind of dev. I shouldn't say game dev, but any kind of development. Uh, all they do is to announce shit three years in advance. See, that's the problem, though, is that the investors won't won't go for that. And so when the investors have your money and they're telling you, hey, well, if you can't pull this off, we're just going to fire you. Then suddenly management is left in the same position that, you know, these articles about people who are in game dev, who are basically the, the bottom rung of the ladder and they're getting shit on all the time. You know, that's sh the, the management gets shit on as well. Because the investors are saying, well, we're just going to replace you if you can't fucking do this. And what are you going to do? Go to another industry where, like, they have the same fucking rules? <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's a global thing, man. It's in every industry. It's, just, it's, it's, it's shit. I don't know what the hell we're going to do to fix it. Uh, you know, maybe unionization would be, would be something that would, that would work. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the magic, the, 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 the magic fucking word is to make all this shit work. Uh, poor management is widespread, which leads to crunch becoming commonplace. Crunch time, especially in the entertainment industry, is par for the course. I can't believe in this day and age, anyone joining the industry doesn't know that. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, my big issue is that crunch lens seems to be hyper focused on one industry when it needs to be generally addressed. I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet that uh, there are articles like this pertaining to other industries as well. But the ones that have been around for like a long time. We probably don't hear it as much from them because it is just an accepted practice. And just to give you an example, like in TV production, nobody bitches about having to work late. You are literally paid a day rate and they own you for the day, right? That's just the way it works. That's always the way it's been. Nobody bitches about crunch time for TV shows because you'd get laughed out of the room. Um... But in like app development, obviously in game development, we're seeing it in app development. We're seeing it as well. Um, there's probably other industries that are relatively new, like medical, like, like medical, uh, like medical tech, which I know medical tech has been around for like a long time, but medical tech, like new tech is basically just app development. So they would basically fall under the same premise of, uh, uh, or the same issues of having to deal with crunch time and all that stuff. Um, but I mean, it's like I'm, it, it exists everywhere. I don't know if it's something that's going to if we're just going to eventually grow tired of hearing about it and we're not going to talk about it anymore or what? I have no idea. Hollywood is notorious for not having or at least very, very, very rarely having uh, crunch time. For not having crunch time. I don't know if that's necessarily true, Draven. Um, I only I worked for T. I worked TV for like a year and it was it was I don't know. I don't know if I can really classify anything as crunch time, but we definitely had some deadlines that seemed a little unrealistic, and I definitely had to work some very long days running cables, running big ass cables across the top of the Golden Nugget Casino, <laughs> so to, to to basically make things work. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. Um, but again, because they own you for the day, it's one of those things that it's just like. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time when you have someone for 18 hours a day. There's plenty of time to get shit done. Um, Hollywood day rate is up to 24 hours. Yeah. When you're doing on uh, when you're doing work on a substation and it's offline for a scheduled period of time, you make sure to finish your work within the planned outage. Uh, unions are good in that industry. I've worked film and union rules made it so that I was compensated properly for a long shoot. 
Let's see. Um, nurses is another bad one with the crunch time since they're always understaffed. Oh, that actually, I hear that a lot. I have a lot of friends who are, um, who are nurses and they, uh, and they talk about that too. Floor nurses actually very specifically and floor nurses and traveling nurses. And there's like, there's, there's like a bunch of different, like, um, I guess pillars in like in, in nurse industry. Um, it's fine. We won't have to worry about this once the automation apocalypse gets rid of the work. Ta-da! Investigating CGI heavy movies and tell me there's no crunch time. Yeah, yeah, that's the first thing I thought of when I when you when you say there's no crunch time in movies. Um, the, the people I know out of there out there say they work X hours. End of story. Anything beyond that is a huge pay increase. Wow. I mean, yeah. I I again. I I never worked movies. Uh, I only did reality TV. And I guess, I guess maybe in reality TV, you're kind of just expected to work all the time because it's reality TV. So there's always going to be, um, some kind of action going on. Uh, so, so yeah. So it, all in all, like this basically mostly just churned out a couple of, a couple of good headlines, i.e. Uh, they're not loot boxes. They're surprise mechanics. Um, Sean Campbell though, who we saw in the video. I, I went. I actually went digging through their uh, their LinkedIn's because I want, kind of wanted to see a little bit more about each of the people that they had representing those, you know, both Epic and EA, and to see kind of what their background was and everything. Didn't really find anything particularly interesting, uh, but I did see that uh, that Sean Campbell here uh, was replaced, like the day after this thing happened. <laughs> so he, he he's he was he's been working at EA for fifteen years. Uh, I'm trying to remember this is from LinkedIn. 15 years working at EA, uh, and he's been working in this particular position uh, as the UK country manager for five years. And um, and then I guess I guess for whatever reason he has left that position and now works in an unknown I guess an unknown uh, position somewhere else within the company. And it's actually almost exactly what they say is that he's been moved to an alt into an alternate and unspecified position after almost five years leading the company's UK activities. So it's uh so that that kind of I, I went back and I watched it again. I was like, I don't really see where this guy has said anything that made me feel like he would just like get canned after this. But boy, is that some odd timing? <laughs> just like just 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 not necessarily. Uh, um, you don't want to come off of something. So I don't know if this is necessarily that. Um widespread news outside of the one headline that wasn't even spoken by him uh but yeah it just it, it for me that's pretty this is a pretty impactful hearing because like you get to see you know this um what is it the digital culture media and sport committee kind of in action i've never seen them in action i have no idea who they were before this um but they seem to they seem to at least be somewhat uh i guess trained or at least experienced in general video game phenom right um because they're not asking a lot of their questions i mean at one point somebody asked um about disabling texting each other he's like i know he's i know you could disable chat in fortnite but can you disable texting and it took a minute for the guy for the for the the, the lawyer to uh to get out of him that what he meant was basically direct messaging he was like, no, there's no texting in the game. There's no texting. And so finally, they, they finally figured out, oh, you meant direct messaging. So it's like, he, he at least knew that in Fortnite, you could disable chat. And he knew that you could DM people. Um, but he didn't really know what it was called. So overall, honestly, just to have on the background, if you just kind of want to see, especially if you live in the UK and you want to see who, you, you know, these are your representatives. I don't know if they're elected officials or anything, but they're definitely assigned to this particular committee. Uh, it might be worth uh, just having on the background, just watching uh, for a little bit. And then some fucking crazy bell rang. And then they all like, disappeared the bell it sounded like a fucking fire alarm it's weird um it might, it might have been the lunch bell actually <clears throat> let's see that had to be uh pre-plants is doing uh, da, 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 da. Uh, you can talk to each other see uh alzen says uh ea president is who created fifa loot boxes you want to win in a fifa multiplayer game uh you're going to need good players you can only get said player in one of 17 different packs i.e loot boxes and you're going to need to buy a lot of packs because they are filled with bad players hey jeez. I don't play FIFA, but, but yeah, Ooh, sorry. Um, this is a reminder for those guys just tuning in. Like I'm, I'm recovering from my, my pleurisy hit. So, uh, so I'm, I got basically chest pain. So anytime I breathe heavily or I, I get too excited about something, uh, I get a little bit of pain in my chest, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll make it through this. We'll make it through this together. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. Moving on. 
those politicians, uh, these politicians at least had kids that played video games. Yeah, no, I was I was very impressed with the level of knowledge that they did have, considering, of course, you know, we've seen our own here in the U.S. We've seen our own representatives try to talk about video games and just somehow, somehow just really, really just like not <laughs> like not even get close. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Picarditis, it's actually pleurisy now. We thought it was Picarditis, clinical diagnosis, the cl clinical diagnosis that has been uh, uh, updated to pleurisy based off of uh, uh, of my own feedback that I gave the doctor. Um, so yes, it's not the heart, it's the lungs. It's very hard to tell because they're so close to each other and they both hurt. So. Um, in general, in terms of movies, most movies are ready for release months before they are out the public. There are very few exceptions for this. Uh, Lord of the Ring, Return of the King, being the most notable, as even the director had not seen the final version in its entirety prior to true prior to release. We're going to assume a bunch of them are civil servants rather than MPs slash politicians. That I do not know, guys. I do not know um, what their their background is. I I just assume that they because they were assigned to this particular committee that they were some kind of an elected official or something like that. Um, again, I I don't really know how much uh, how uh, Parliament works. I know that they're really, really good at talking shit to each other and without using curse words. <laughs> so that's about the, that's the extent of what I know. Um, so let's see. Next up. Next up. Randy. That's right. Yes, we do have some, we have some more Randy news. Yes. Uh, former Gearbox employee provides proof. Proof. We got him. That Randy diverted funds to personal company. Ooh. Randy. Oh. Oh. Oh man, we got him. Oh man, we got him. <gasps> That's right. That's right, Randy. We got you. We don't got shit. <laughs> we don't have, we ain't got shit. Seriously. All right. So, Randy, listen, Randy did everything within his legal requirements legally to 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 take that money and funnel it over to his own uh basically for his own personal use um was it a shitty thing to do yes but that's about it so uh let me read this out here it says if the royalty were just owed to gearbox so real quick wait, here's the background on this thing um when at a certain point in time Randy was given uh, by 2K, publi their publisher, uh, $12 million plus $3 million um, in installments of $5 million each. So it's $15 million in installments of $5 million, $5 million um, in three installments. Uh, and the money was supposed to be basically bonus money that was supposed to go to the company. But it also included that Randy had to be involved in the development of the game. And so Randy took it as that means this money is mine, 12 million, 12, 12 million of it, 3 million for his, for his buddy, his co-founder. Um, and Randy having 50% of the company and 51% of operational say has 100% covered his ass on basically being able to take this money and use it for himself. So if anything, what we'll get from this is that Randy's a scumbag. Uh, <laughs> and everyone's going to say, oh, had no idea. Uh, here's a quote. He says, uh, if the royalty were just owed to Gearbox on the whole and then Randy diverted it, it would look very much like stealing. As an officer or director, you owe a duty to protect the assets of the company. That's usually divided into du duty of loyalty and duty of care. Here, the duty of loyalty is very much implicated as one would argue, as they are in fact arguing, that Randy took a business opportunity directly out of the hands of the company he owes his duty towards. So Randy being the founder, co-founder slash CEO, president slash CEO, um, as a CEO, you do, you are, you're supposed to basically do every business deal for the benefit of the company. It is, in, it is unethical to divert funds in such a way, but it's not illegal. Yes, a CEO as a chief level off, you know, position in a company 
you're supposed to do everything for the benefit of the company. That means even money. Money comes in for like a bonus, for whatever. You're supposed to take that money and give it to the company and basically you disperse that, you know, amongst the employees or towards the bottom line or towards whatever. Uh, yes, it's your, yes, thank you. It's exact. that's exactly what it's called. Fiduciary duty. Um, uh, I haven't heard that said actually for a long time, but yes, that's exactly what it's called. And it's something that you're, you're supposed to do. It's not a, it's not a fiduciary, uh, requirement legally. It's just a duty. So you can skirt your duty and, uh, divert funds however you want. If you have 51% operational control and 50% uh, ownership of the company. I hope you have any degree in finance helps me remember. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Cause that's exactly what it's called. Um, and so, uh, and so this is basically where we are. We're at with this is that yes, he did. He did indeed, um, divert funds. So at least that part is kind of let that part's out. Like we, now we know that it happened before it was like, did he, did he, did he, Oh, allegedly he did this. And allegedly the USB drive had porn on it or whatever. Right. Uh, and we find out, yeah, the, the USB drive did have porn on it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and yes, now he, he did. It's funny because all of these allegations that would make somebody kind of look like a shitty person. It's like, Oh yeah, that's all true. But it was all legal. Right. It was legal porn that was on that thumb drive. It's, uh, it was legal for him to divert, uh, funds over. Um, for his own personal gain. And, but I mean, was it, were any of these things, uh, uh, <laughs> none, none of these things paint him in a good light though. Uh, he's probably not acted in a way in violation of the laws, but he could be civilly sued by other owners, executive of the company for failing in his duties to the company. Yes. Yes. Um, now I'm, I'm not a lawyer or anything. Okay. Uh, but after you, actually, I think this is actually, wait, isn't this a, this is a civil suit. Is it not? Hold on a second. Um, State of Ongoing Legal Struggle Reform. I want to say this actually is a civil suit, in which case, who knows what the outcome is going to be? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, what do you say? Yeah, but this guy wasn't an executive or owner. He was hired, he was hired lawyer. Oh, you're talking about uh, uh, David Eddings. David Eddings. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll do that. Yeah, no, there's no mention of civil. Um, although, but here's the thing, though. Uh, I, I don't know if, I don't know what the, the Game Daily biz, what their leanings are, uh, if they're, you know, uh, if they're impartial. Uh, if they're not impartial, then they probably would have just omitted the civil part. And so that part, I actually don't know. So I apologize. I don't know if it's civil. I should look that up beforehand. I totally, I, I think we covered it before. Um, but either way, legally, I don't think he's going to be held to any kind of, um, basically anything. You know, so what does it say? Uh, it depends how his contract reads. If it is listed as a fiduciary, which which is a legal term, it might be a crime. However, if he was not listed uh, that way, he could get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we are, uh, again, we're just kind of like, we're just checking in on this developing story and seeing, uh, and, you know, kind of get the latest on this because there's really nothing else we can report on. But I do want, I did want to mention it because a lot of people are looking at this and they're running with it like, we got them. And I don't, the, the, the last thing I want is for people to basically get, you know, to really get their hopes up for whatever reason, uh, that we got Randy Pitchard, uh, Pritchford. Um, and, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. I, I think that, I think that Pitchford is going to be, you know, he's going to make it through this thing. Um, uh, yeah, don't get your hopes up. And we're, we're not going to get, there's, there's going to be no like, like a, a jail time or anything crazy about this. I, that's definitely not going to happen. Um, even like the assault allegations, like there's no, there's no witnesses. Like, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's just that yeah, nothing's going to happen. Pretty sure it has to be civil state prosecutors and district attorneys being criminal proceedings. Otherwise it's a civil matter. Yeah. Uh, all it means is that it could be something there, but unless we know all the legal stuff for his side, that means it means nothing. Um, so yeah, we, we, Again, you know, it's $12 million that should have gone towards, uh, should, should have gone towards um, uh, the employees who were uh, building the game. But it even says right here, um, na, 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 na. it does say that he can argue. Let me actually pull up this argue. Here we go. Uh, oh, no, no. Oh, crap. Okay. I can't remember the quote. But it does say that, uh, that he can, maybe at the very bottom here. Here's the actual. If you want to go through and actually read the uh, the, the 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 actual filing here, see jury. The jury trial is currently set for January seventh, twenty twenty. However, a settlement may preclude 
the need for a public brawl. This is an emotionally charged feud between two childhood friends and former business partners amid an enormous uh, marketing rollout for one of Fall's most anticipated games. So we don't publicly discuss details of confidential business terms between 2K and our partners. Uh, oh, this is this is 2K uh, basically chiming in and saying that uh, we don't comment on these kinds of things. Um, is the company publicly traded? No, no, it's uh, it's uh, it's owned. It's still owned by um, by Randy. <laughs> he has 50 percent ownership and 51 percent uh, between him and between him and Ball, um, his um, partner. They basically own the company. They have investors like any other company has, but but um, I'd vote. I'd settle for people to voluntarily stop giving him money. Maybe yeah, that'd be that'd be something. Um, reading a January 11th article on Polygon, this was filed in a Texas civil court. So there you go. Is this actually hold on a second? Case number, calls number, uh, Dallas County, Texas. So yeah, there you go. Uh, uh judicial uh, uh, district. Again, everything beyond this is like is a little bit uh, kind of above my pay grade here. But if any of you guys want to go through and uh, and take a look at it, you can. But it is still in Texas, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that yeah, it's uh, probably uh, a civil case. So in that case, you know, we this. I don't know how this could go. I have no idea how this could go. It could go in front of Judge Judy. And uh, you could have Randy Pitchford on one side and uh, David Eddings on the other. <laughs> if we only could be so lucky. Uh, how long has this been going for? I've been going for uh, about 40 minutes. Uh, don't buy Borderlands 3. Yeah, so, I mean, if you don't want to support, if you don't want an ultimate fanfic, now I'm, like, imagining how that could go. But, yeah, civil cases can indeed go either way. So... But in, 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 no, in no circumstance is this going to equal any kind of jail time for Randy. Unless something else, unless something else shows up, um, there's, yeah, there's nothing, it's, it's not going to be jail time or anything like that. So there's people, there's, there's, there are folks out there for some reason think this is going to equal the jail time for Randy. It's just not going to happen. Uh, at the very least, people are going to be mad at Randy for, for, for being, you know, a jerk. And that's going to be, uh, I guess, the end of it. <laughs> uh, there'll be some kind of compensation or a settlement or something, probably, for sure, before this actually goes to any kind of court uh, or a court date, which is, I think was a January 2020. Let's take a look. Let me see that. 2020. Uh, January 7th, 2020. So, wow, that's like right after the start of the new year there. Uh, so, we're anything that's over. Let's see, like, the um, Judge Judy is binding arbitration, by the way. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Um, mad at Randy for being Randy. Yeah. As 50% owner, he could make the argument that uh, it was compensation, and it means the person filing suit has to prove that he didn't earn it. Exactly. Because it also, also one of the reasons why they offered uh, or awarded them the $50 million, $15 million uh, was uh, they wanted the guarantee that Randy was going to be involved in the project. And so if they named him as, you know, they want him to be a part of the project, then it, w it, it wouldn't be that much of a stretch to say that if it wasn't for Randy that money probably wouldn't be given to the developers, period. So, we'll have to check back in in 2020, which is now only six months away. Um, what was the other company he used it for? Uh, what's the name of the company? Uh, Magic, uh, let me see, see. Uh, Randy Pitchford Magic Company. <laughs> uh, let me see. Na, 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 na. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it off top, but uh, I wish I could find the name because <laughs> it is, it is. Oh, here it is. Uh, Pitchford Entertainment Media and Magic. There it is. That's the name of the company right there. Pitchford Entertainment Media and Magic. Ooh. Oh man. Ah, uh, something else happened related to our boy. So we got this uh, this giant bomb podcast where they're talking a little bit about this. Uh, actually, I'll let the I'll let them go ahead and actually uh, explain this one for me. There we go. Boop. A new level over the weekend as my wife and I played through that new free DLC that's supposed to bridge Borderlands two and three. It started when I ran into Claptrap with his new voice. That's fine. I understand uh, that guy no longer works at the company. Where it got shady is that the mission you do for Claptrap called Claptocurrency centers around him trying to accrue a ton of cryptocurrency in an illegal way and ultimately stabbing people in the back. Once this goes terribly wrong, Claptrap ends the mission by saying something along the lines of, oh, my plan to get this money failed. Now I have to go back to my former employer on my knees and beg for my job back. Ooh. It seemed like more than a coincidence. 
I don't huh. I don't know the extent of the issues between Randy Pitchford Gearbox and former employer employee Dave Eddings, so I won't take sides. However, I do think it's a little shitty to make a mission that appears to be a very pointed message. Am I crazy? I fucking love this guy's face. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, all right, so I'll play. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the uh, uh, the video that shows the the actual uh, story here. So bad news, minion. I have no idea how this happened, but the value of Becco wafers has completely crashed. They're worth nothing. Nothing. I guess I'll have to go beg Lilith for my old job back. Oh, Lilith, mighty ruler of the Crimson Raiders, I beseech you to please, please let me have my old job back. And you in your time of need. So. So I'm sorry I banned you in your time of need and all that good stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that it is, this is, I'm just going to leave this up right here if you guys don't mind. Uh, <laughs> I just really love this guy's face here. Uh, by the way, is this, like, how meta is this? We're, like, talking about, a, uh, going over a clip of another podcast. Um, oh, man. All right, so, it was brought up yesterday, and I wish I remember who said it, uh, in Discord, that... It is very possible this is a dig at the rise and fall of cryptocurrency. And I realize it's not completely fallen, but uh, we can definitely argue that it's not as, <laughs> as, as it's not going up like it was. Um, and it could be a dig at that. Clap, 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 was it clap, clap the currency they called it? Uh, and so, is this a, this is a podcast? I don't know. That's a giant bomb cast. This is, uh, just news. Yeah, you're right. Let me move that. Um, Sarah, oh, Sarah says, so there you go. Uh, so it is, it is entirely possible. This is just, this just happens to be, it just, it's a dig, it's the dig at, at cryptocurrency. That's all. That's, it's totally coincidence that it's claptrap. With the new voice, because David Eddings is no longer doing it, uh, talking about because if you look at David Eddings' history, he left um, he left Rooster, you know, he left a uh, 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 gearbox to go straight to Rooster Teeth. Because I was I was under the impression I was like, I was like, wait a second, does David Eddings have a cryptocurrency background I didn't know of? And I went and looked, and there is no association I could find between Dev David Eddings and any kind of cryptocurrency. Um, that is like 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 firm. There's like some like SEO trap sites, but that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> the Ligma coin, really. <laughs> Anyways, so um, it is entirely possible. It is entirely possible that this is just coincidence. But as Iris said, the optics are uh, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. By the way, yeah, that claptrap voice is pretty fucking good. I feel like even I could do a claptrap voice, really, with just the, just enough of a filter on my voice. I feel like I can totally do that. Um, totally, yeah. Coincidence. Coincidence. Just it just so happens. It just so happens that this all all these fell together. Um, what do you do? You guys think? Do you guys think that there's like some kind of subtle jab here or anything? It's hard. It's easy to to like laugh at it, but like really. Do you guys think there's actually like a, this is like an intentional? Of course, there's a jab. See why they were like, uh, why would what would we pay you when we can just make a computer do it for free? Yeah, exactly. He says, nah, darn LVO for claptrap. That'd be weird <laughs> to go from that. Wah, wah! <laughs> it's a Darnell. Give the shitty nature of Randy that has been brought out recently. That's a hundred percent a jab. I think we are reading too much into it. Uh, hard to tell. It depends on when mission, when the mission was made. Well, the, well, the mission was definitely made after he left. It's, it's recent DLC. Um, and it's supposed to bridge the gap between Borderlands 2 and 3. And he left, he left some time ago. So it's definitely, we know for sure it was made after the fact. Um, maybe he talked about crypto at work. <laughs> yeah, it's true, huh? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's something that we don't know that was just like social between all of them. Uh, this whole thing happened too recently for a writer to put that into a game. And... Uh, Randy is pretty is petty enough. Is Randy really in charge of this? Nothing Randy Pitchford does is subtle. He's the Mysterio of CEOs. He's a ham of such magnitude. How does the Earth support his neutron neutronic ego? God damn! <laughs> Possible that the writers have been known to include IRL stuff. I forget exactly. I think it was in a prequel that included a conversation Anthony Birch had with somebody. Someone help me. I'm floundering. 
Don't make me read that kind of shit, monster. <laughs> I know this, this would hardly be subtle, but this is Borderlands. If it was a jab, it'd be way more obvious. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, uh, I, I, I think that, I, I, again, I think as mentioned, the optics are terrible. Um, for sure. It, it, it does seem like almost a little bit of a stretch, but at the same time, given like recent everything related to I, I feel like it's, it's, yeah, I, I, it's quite, it's quite the oversight. <laughs> it's definitely not good for optics at all. Uh, it's funnier if it's a coincidence. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That'd be the best. That'd be the absolute best, but we will never, we will literally never know for sure. We'll never know for sure. Jeff said pretty much the same thing after that clip ended. Oh, okay. They did. Uh, I thought it was funnier when they just kind of let it hang there. Um, oh, all right. So we, we, we have some, this next story that I've been waiting for an update on just got updated 25 minutes ago, literally right after we started. And when I, I told you guys is what happened. I said, I said, I'm checking, I'm checking on these news pieces because I know the second I start, the shit's going to change. I just checked again and the shit changed. Now this isn't necessarily like a crazy deep story or anything like that, where it's going to be life changing or anything. No, it's simple. This guy named eight C. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he works, uh, or he's uh, he's signed to Phase Clan. We've talked about Phase Clan on here uh, at least once. Uh, I, I, we're getting to the point where I'm going to need a fucking Phase fucking button now for my fucking soundboard. Uh, but he was uh, he was banned. It says right here, one game ban on record. Um, and you th and and you you look at this and you say, wow, man, can Phase get a break from T few? To like the, that twelve year old kid, to uh, high sky, a high sky, and now to this guy, like Jesus, it's like ever, it's like constantly, and so this story was uh, was dropped by Slasher. Now we've talked about Slasher before. Slasher is a um, an independent journalist. I mean, really, he's just like I mean, he's just like me. <laughs> like he just he does news stuff. He's he's more embedded with the esports stuff, so he he covers esports stuff like constantly. But he's not a so he's he's not a a journalist or anything. He just kind of reports things. Uh, he has a podcast and all that shit. So in that respect, it's kind of like what I do, right? He tweets funny weird shit sometimes, and then you know he has a podcast where he talks about stuff. And so he says, Justin Faze, professional PUBG esport player, eight C, has been game banned for cheating on Steam. You may be being kind of a hard ass though. I don't really have an opinion either way. I just know that he's come under fire several times by a lot of people for dropping, uh, dropping news before it's confirmed. Uh, when Justin Wong, VP of partnerships at Twitch was laid off, Slasher dropped the news before Justin Wong even fucking dropped the news. And that turned into a whole crazy thing. So he has definitely been under fire for dropping news before it can be confirmed. Um, and his response is that, hey, bro, it's journalism. <laughs> it's just wait what's what i do I, what do you want what do you want me to do um and so he does he follows up and he says uh eight c's ban is legitimate and was made directly by PUBG corporation slash blue hole a league source confirms with me so he has said that he has confirmed it with his source this was as of yesterday 5 p.m pacific time but there is an update uh, there is an update. Let me see if I can find that actual do 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 from phase eight C. I hope I'm not slaughtering his name. The game ban on PUBG Woods removed. We'll post a statement later about what went down. So the so it was removed. Obviously, it was done in error. Uh, we know that the reporting system on certain games can sometimes be abused, and. When you are somebody that's signed with a with a clan as big as FaZe, there's obviously some kind of skill that you have. Whereas most folks view other people that have skill as being cheaters. And so when you die in PUBG, clearly the other person is cheating. Let's report them. And I can imagine that if you're somebody who is basically just, just banging out headshots left and right, probably racking up all kinds of reports. And so... He was banned. We don't know the whole story yet. Let me check his Twitter real quick to see if that was updated. Uh, na, 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 na. 
Statement regarding the ban on PUBG. Oh, he actually did update this earlier. Yesterday morning around 10.30 a.m., I logged on to Steam to find out that I had received a game ban in PUBG. I've immediately communicated with PUBG after the ban and fully cooperated with them. My ban was lifted following the investigation by the internal anti-cheat te team. Uh, due to the insensitivity of anti-cheat topic, I won't disclose any specifics on the reasoning I was banned. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my teammates, Fuzzface, you blah, 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 blah. huge thank you to PUBG and the anti-cheat team for acting quickly on this to allow my team to compete in PEL later today. So... So he he has said that uh, obviously that, that that it was false. It was a false ban. But Slasher said otherwise. He did update. He did update just uh, just again thirty minutes ago. He says Phase at C team Steam ban was removed by PUBG E M E A uh, as a false report. To be clear, my initial follow up source is someone who at PUBG Esports who's at PUBG Esports, but it is clear. That was wrong, and that's my bad. Minus one eSport rank points. <laughs> so, woo, man. That was I, I, I was I was gonna report on this as just being a uh, being a ban until until the updates and I hit uh, this morning. So so this is uh, it is this look this is a bad look for Slasher. This is a very bad look for Slasher, who has already again been under fire a number of times before, you know, for basically putting out news before they could be confirmed um and you know there's a reason why in actual journalism you're supposed to have reliable sources supposed to confirm your sources you're supposed to do all this stuff yeah you can't jump the gun slasher was 100 percent correct he did get banned i mean if you want to call it like that that's fine and he, he, he did follow up and say that his his sort is that the ban is legitimate turns out it was not so yeah, he doubled down on he doubled down on something that he thought he could get confirmation on, and unfortunately he did not. Um, and you know, I don't know. Like I, I just feel like Slash is walking a very thin line here with what he's what he should and shouldn't say. Somebody's gonna somebody is gonna be very upset with him um, in the future because he's definitely like I said, he's a he's not a journalist, right? Like he's not a he's not an actual journalist, but he does have a lot of journalist um, tendencies, like a lot of journalists habits uh and so he should have just let it sit in the gray area until confirmed yeah exactly trust but verify yeah uh i'd read him saying the legit word there is yes he was banned if you know what i mean not so much yes he was cheating sure yeah no 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 you're, i mean you're right you're sure you can read it like that uh legit for somebody in the esports can can mean it was done by somebody in the anti-cheats team I uh, got to get the exclusive news scoop. That's what it feels like. Yeah, a, a lot of times, especially especially when he reported on um, uh, on Justin Wong, and even even him and DJ Wheat actually went at it for a minute there because of layoffs and everything. But I think him and Wheat made up, and they're friends now. Um, <clears throat> context is important in reporting. Yep, he's going to cause the wrong person to lose money, and he will get sick. They'll get sick of his shit and sue him. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Like he's he's like I said, he's really 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 walking a fine line with this shit. Um, and somebody, somebody's gonna, gonna get tired of his shit. <laughs> gonna get tired of his bullshit. All right. Next up. The difference between dude stabs man and dude stabs, wait, 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 uh, dude stabs man attacking his kids. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up, you guys heard of this auto chess thing? You kids heard of this auto chess thing? Apparently it's taken over Twitch. It actually is. Uh, so Auto Chess started off as a, it was a Dota mod, uh, if I recall. It wasn't that long ago. Um, and there is now official releases of this game from not just Valve, but also from Riot. Riot has gone and they've created a, uh, a League of Legends version of Auto Chess. And then, of course, Steam has released Underlords. Uh, which is also a an auto chess style game based off of their own game, Dota. Excuse me. Um, you don't get the whole point of it. So for those of you guys who don't know what auto chess is, it's it's a lot like it's a strategy game, right? You basically build a deck, but your deck is like actual like soldiers or characters or whatever that you could put down in a field. And you have, like, think like Hearthstone, you have a certain amount of mana you could spend, right? So you have certain characters use a certain amount of, uh, of, um, of mana, I guess. 
and you build this deck as you play. It's 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 hard hard to, hard to call it like a deck game, right? Because you're really kind of you had a carousel of like of the different characters you could choose from, but each character does have a cost. They do have a class. They do have certain things they could do. And you position them on the field. You can see it in the field here. There's kind of like a grid, right? Uh, this one is a grid. Uh, there's hexes for uh, League of Legends. Um, a de it's a deck building, yeah, deck building real time strategy. And you put them all on the board, and people just basically, and and then and then they just basically go to town. Um, it has more similarities to tower defense games and deck builders. Yeah, it is. It, you know what? It's it's a very it's a very unique take on strategy. I, I highly recommend uh, going and watching just like a gameplay video. Uh, based off of what I've just told you, that should be enough for you to actually just watch a gameplay video and then, okay, yeah, I get it. As a matter of fact, maybe I could just pull up one right now if they have one here. Let me pull up. Let me see. No, 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 let's, let's go to Twitch. Let's see if someone's streaming on Twitch. Oops. That's, I type in Twitch. The first thing that comes up is Twitch Swing Artifact. Um, so this is a it's this is this is a, this is a new this is a new thing that's that's apparently if you have both Riot, if you have Riot tripping over themselves to get this shit out the door, clearly this is something that we're gonna see other. I mean, if Riot's doing it, already Valve's doing it. Uh, if Riot's doing it too, we're definitely gonna see more folks uh, jump on this and start getting involved with. Um, which basically, with basically trying to make uh, uh, their own versions of this. Uh, let me actually go ahead and. Uh, whoa, what is going on here? Oh, <laughs> I turned it. I tuned into uh, uh, Disguised Toast, and Disguised Toast uh, just so we can have some 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 video to watch. Uh, Disguised Toast is watching a video of himself. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> So he's gonna go through and watch. You guys, should, again, you can watch from the gameplay here and kind of surmise what the uh, uh, how the game is kind of like uh, kind of played. Uh, it is the League of Legends one is called Team Fight Tactics. It is available on the PBE uh, and the um, Underlords uh, is available right now on on Steam. When will we get Heroes of the Storm Auto Chess? We will probably get something like that relatively soon. I'm sure. Well, no, actually, Blizzard's like the last one to the party. So we'll get auto chess from Blizzard in 2021. Um, but we're probably going to see other other people, uh, other other devs like flip quickly and create one of these, um, you know, their own version of of, of this. Uh, it was a mini game in StarCraft FPS. They just can. It was. Uh, they, yeah, yeah, there you go. So it's funny because jokingly, somebody mentioned yesterday. It's like, oh, the uh, uh, they can do a StarCraft. And I was like, that's really silly to take a strategy game and make another strategy game from it. But, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. It really is not. Uh, Battle Royale Auto Chess. Blizzard missed the boat. The Warcraft units are already in use. Oh, I know. <laughs> they was in use to make Dota. And then Dota made Auto Chess. And then the fucking circle of life comes back around. Diablo 4 Auto Chess. Oh, you imagine if there was like a Diablo Auto Chess and they don't announce Diablo 4 two years in a row. There's no way though. Um, pretty sure it's been a StarCraft custom game for a long time. It's probably been a Dota custom game for a long time as well. Um, I'm sure that this was actually a Warcraft 3 custom game at some point. Uh, there's so many tower defense games and everything. Like this is definitely happening. Uh, it has been happening. It's just, it's just got to the point to where, again, just like Dota, um, where it got big enough that game developers recognize, hey, you know, we could, we could probably build something out make it official and make some money off of this. And this is probably going to be the next big thing. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's kind of tough to tell because you know, when battle royales first started taking off, we were just kind of like, Oh yeah, it's you know, kind of, it's kind of fun to play, you know, a survivor game style of, uh, or hunger game style of gameplay in day Z. We thought that was kind of neat. And then all of a sudden the standalone games and it just got fucking blew up. Um, Oh toast. You're making this weird for me. <laughs> Uh, Microsoft retooling Project Scarlet into an auto chess box. Uh, TFT was developed in like two months. Yeah, and that's not that's not at all that dissimilar from Fortnite going from uh, Save the World to Battle Royale. Like they already have assets available. Look at look what they have to build. Just a fucking board. <laughs> like they have to build a board and then build the you know, build the UI mechanics and all that good stuff. But still, like visually, like they already have most of the ass uh, the actual assets themselves. Um, Remember when Daisy was a game that was good and a mod that we played good times. Uh, I want to wait for the dust to settle before choosing a game. 
Yeah, so this is this this does it's funny because this all happened so quickly, it definitely feels like between team fight tactics and um and underlord, it's like you have League of Legends and Dota 2. Um <clears throat> Oh, no, no. League of Legends and Heroes of New Earth. I think that's a more apt comparison because we know that one of these two games, one of these two games is, uh, is going to take off. Which one is it going to be? Who knows? Uh, I have not played either one of them. I'll be honest. It does actually look kind of interesting. This morning, I, but yesterday I had no idea how the game functioned or anything. I was like, that's not chess. <laughs> that was my that was my actual reaction. It's so old. I'm so old. It's like, that's not how you play chess. <laughs> but then I actually went and looked into the game mechanics and everything. And I was just like, oh, you know what? This is actually this is actually pretty dope. Like to me, it was like playing, it's yeah, it's a strategy game. Um You don't know how funny it is. Apparently, TF2 board is is one row shorter and riot said that the change change that they need to scrap the game. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's the children who are wrong. I believe strategy games that require that require thinking will never be more popular than action quick instincts games. Um oh yeah, well, so you're you're saying that you don't think that this game is going to be bigger than like Fortnite, right? But there was a there was a point in time where Hearthstone was like the game that everyone played. Like Hearthstone was massive and was really only superseded by um uh, by, I mean, Fortnite wasn't even a thing when, when Hearthstone was released. Probably just League of Legends, really. I think, yeah. Uh, I don't know that the, the view history for all this stuff. But, I mean, look, there's already, like, what is this, uh, uh, teamfighttactics.gg? Kittens, is this yours? I bet this is, I bet Kittens has a site for this already. <laughs> Would not be surprised. Uh, it's addictive. I didn't think I'd play as, as much as you do. Oh, nice. I'm too old for new ideas. I'll just mod Skyrim again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just buy Final Fantasy 7 on another device and I won't play it. That's that's what happens when you get old. You buy you buy old games on different devices thinking that you're going to relive that relive that entire experience and then use it if I can never do it. Um, this might be as big as Hearthstone, but not Fortnite. I believe that. I believe that. Sure. We should not we should not discount how discredit how how big uh, Hearthstone got, though. Um, guys, don't worry. While well, Classic is in like two months. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I have Chrono Trigger on every platform. Skyrim Auto Chess. The Hearthstone streamers are playing them. That's true. That you're right, actually. Uh uh, what? Crip, which I think he was he Hearthstone for a good chunk there. Obviously, this guy's toast is playing it. Um God, there's a bunch of people. And yeah, you're right. Like if you look at the names, let me go back to the list, uh, the list here. Uh I'm a cutie pie by the cutie pie plays, whatever. Okay, there's a lot of guys I don't know on right now, so I must not be looking at, uh, this is not, like, prime time. <clears throat> uh, all, all, hard, all Hearthstone players are playing it. There you go. Oh, is Hafu playing it, too? Oh, there you go. Uh, Cutie Pie is a LOL player. I thought he did, like, more, uh, uh, just more general stuff now, but, yeah, maybe. I didn't really pay attention to what, specifically what Cutie Pie's been playing lately. Uh, the viewing audience for Hearthstone is similar to Auto Chess, and neither appeal to Fortnite viewers. So yes, yes, she is. This is going to be huge. They're going to be. They're going to put League of Legends Auto Chess into the client. There's a lot of League players. So oh yeah, if they put. If they, if they're going to. They're definitely going to do that. By the way, yeah, of course. Duh. Uh, they're already going to put it in the client. And when you launch League, it's not like there's because you could say, well, Underlords is going to be in the Steam client, but that's a way different thing, right? When you have thousands. Tens of thousands, hundred thousand games to dig through. Uh, no matter how hard you try to surface your own game, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get plays. So, are you? What do you guys think? That you guys think that Team Fight Tactics is going to be the one that um, that basically takes the uh, takes the gold in terms of viewership over time? Because here's what the day one numbers look like between the two. Um, Dota Underlords in the first twenty four hours had one hundred seventy thousand concurrent users, uh, but Team Fight Tactics had two hundred thousand viewers we don't know i don't have the numbers for viewership on either one but right now i mean this is right right, right now let's just go actually back up in here and take a look at the browse here let's go and close this let's see team fight tactics is right here and underlords there it is <laughs> underlords is down here so seventy six thousand to thirteen thousand. It's looking like TFT might, yeah, I think TFT might probably take it. If Valve wants to surface it, it'll be on top 
They're going to have pop-ups. I bet if I re-log into Steam right now, it'll probably pop right up and be like, play Underlords. Matter of fact, as a matter of fact, let's fucking do that right now. Let me see. Let me exit Steam. <laughs> I would love if they actually did that. Go, Open up Steam. Is Auto Chess a new buzzword for idle games? <laughs> There's still some strategy involved you have to actually participate in. Uh, but I mean... It, you, you just, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, there's the game. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Insurgency. Ah, uh, okay. No, we didn't get it. Well, hold on a second. There's more than one news. There's more than one news here. Let me see. Inferno, I'll, I'll get to that. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, next. Okay, so, uh, oh, my friend, there it is. Okay, so I knew it would be there. It wasn't the first thing they showed me, but I knew it was gonna be there. Yep. I know, Crushes Legends number one, man. You gotta tell me that shit. Got tattooed on my dick. All right, so, that is, uh, Auto, ch auto chest, next next big thing, next big thing. So all you all you old fucks out there, just go watch a video so you can at least understand it, so you don't sound like you're. <laughs> you might actually like it. Oh shut fuck it, Ira. <laughs> I got the Underlord's notification. I thought they were making an adventure game or something. Yeah, I think yeah, that's right. I think they did send out something like that. <laughs> I've been playing auto chest for five months. There you go. There you go. So I don't sound like a politician. Yeah, exactly. Is it time for the era ban? Ooh. Ooh, man. I don't know. Ooh. Where's corpse? <laughs> all right. Moving on. Moving on. We actually got a lot of news here. Holy shit. We're at going a little over an hour. This is great. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. I'm going to die later, but it's totally fine. Um, I guess speaking of Twitch, since we're already here, because we're already here, real quick, let me find, uh, let me pull up the artifact. Let me see. Okay, so there's no... I mean, there's some questionable stuff in here. Young Dolph. Shalot. I don't know what the fuck that is. But the artifact uh, section in, um, on Twitch is looking pretty healthy. Not in viewership numbers, mind you. China <laughs> risky click of the day. It is. It's very... I'm not clicking on this, by the way. I have, I have zero faith. Uh, I mean, granted... Only like two of them are actually playing the game. Uh, if you missed it before, if you missed it before, uh, there were a ton of people streaming not artifact in this section. Um, everything from fucking beheadings to terrorist attacks to uh, to fucking hentai porn and fucking uh, bestiality porn. Like there were there were so many really. Uh, unnerving things being streamed to to uh, to to this section, uh, and as a result of that, Twitch has said that they are going to sue the streamers who flooded its artifact category with gore and pornography. And this shit was legit, man. Uh, like they they really did have like like actual bestiality porn. Did you guys catch the pig thing? If you guys are paying attention, you would have caught the pig thing. Can't you can't you can't unsee that shit? All right. But it was there. And Twitch is now because they tried they tried their hardest. Even even I I sent out a tweet and I was kind of like, give me a fucking break, Twitch. Like get your shit together. I deleted the tweet that had the link um to the uh to the section because I felt like I was contributing to that because it was clearly getting out of hand. Like it was not stopping. Yes, <laughs> big thing like what is the thing for Black Mirror? It was kind of like Black Mirror, yeah. Um I wasn't flocking to artifacts. I saw nothing. Yeah, yeah. It was it was definitely blowing up on on social media for sure. But uh, yeah, don't worry. If you guys missed it, you, you guys you guys fucking dodged a bullet. Uh, but yeah, they are. They did say they're gonna go and they're going to uh, sue uh, hundred uh, uh about a hundred folks. Uh, this is right here. It says the company filed a lawsuit in California against anonymous streamers named John and Jane Doe's one through one hundred who were banned for these streams. They're suing these people for trademark infringement, breach of their contract with Twitch, fraud, and uh, and for unlawful use of the company's platform. Now, you would think that the only thing that they have is just the IPs, which IPs, like, you could, yeah, you could pinpoint to where that came from, but you you can also say that it was um, spoofed, or it was, it was rerouted, or whatever. So IPs are still a little bit fuzzy, but... Towards the end of that whole fiasco that night, which was about three weeks ago, I think, um, they actually turned on forced two-factor authentication. So people had to uh, add some kind of secondary authentication. And so I 
think what Twitch was doing there was because it's, it was still happening. Like it wasn't stopping some folks. But I think was what Twitch was doing there was basically gathering just more information. So instead of just like just nuking that whole section and nuking every new channel to try to stream to that, they instead just allowed for more information, uh, allowed it to stay open just long enough for them to get some more information so they could do this. Um, sure, yeah, you could argue, yeah, burner phones and all that good stuff, sure. But you know fucking damn well that some idiot out there who's like, oh, I'm going to fucking stream bestiality porn to Twitch, you know damn well that they were just like, oh, they'll never catch me, and they just did it. Of course. Of course. So, uh, I'm willing to bet that they probably will get a couple people out of this, 1 through 100, uh, based off the information that they were able to gather, courtesy of uh, turning on the <laughs> uh, two-factor authentication. Because somebody was like, oh, this, oh yeah, whatever, they'll never, what are they going to do? Sue me? <laughs> I bet it's Florida man. <laughs> Florida man. <laughs> uh, stream streams uh, BCI port of Twitch. Twitch ain't gonna do shit. Exactly. 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 Oh man. In other news, in other news, uh, Dr. Disrespect doesn't seem to be taking his Twitch ban very seriously. Hold on a second. I want to point out real quick. That th so this article from Twitch, or sorry, from uh, Kotaku, discusses a little bit about, uh, you know, as the title implies, Dr. Respect does not seem to be taking his Twitch ban very seriously. I love that right fucking here, right here, is the, <laughs> the last time he got in trouble uh, and he returned to 388,000 concurrent viewers. So it's, <laughs> it, it's, 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 a, he's gonna, he's gonna come back. It's gonna be bigger than ever. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna fucking watch it. Are you kidding me? Of course I am. Uh, is Doc, is the Doc really not taking his, his band very seriously? Let's check in with Doc himself and see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't really see, I don't really see him taking this shit very seriously. We got some music with that. Oh yeah. <sighs> no, he's not returned. As far as I know, he is still currently banned. I guess we'll just, you know, wait until uh, <laughs> we know. So we know at least it's been a week, right? Yeah, it's been a week. It's definitely been a week. It's been a week. I'm a little upset they didn't loop that better, but uh, <laughs> but that's a, it's a pretty good screensaver. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, so Kotaku's upset. This fucking music. Kotaku's upset because, uh, because Dr. Dis Dr. Disrespect was not taking his band very seriously. And I just thought that headline just as a whole was pretty fucking funny. The fact that it's even an article is pretty fucking funny. If you really, if you really want someone to go away or take something seriously, maybe just stop fucking talking about them for a second. Maybe if you don't give them a platform, maybe that'll help. The guy's name is literally Disrespect. Do you really think that he's going to respect his band? It's a fucking character, man. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Kotaka wants their Twitch channel to be banned so somebody watches it. Yeah, they're mad. Jesus. Oh, my God. I, I, lo I love this fucking thing, by the way. This fucking DVD thing. Oh, it's so ridiculous. <sighs> so, Kotaku loves being such puritans. They're so dumb. They're so dumb sometimes. Even Jason Schreier says something. My favorite person at at at, at uh, Kotaku, which is basically just one person, and it's very, it's a very. He's also walking a thin line with me. Says some like real dumb shit um, about CD Projekt Red. Uh, somebody was like, I guess because the, the focus of his article interview about CD Projekt Red was mostly on like just peripheral stuff, not even about the game itself. And so someone was like, "Aren't you guys a game develop like game journalists? Like, aren't you supposed to talk about the game?" And he said, uh, I'm not, I don't want to quote, but he said something along the lines of, if you're concerned about how many polygons are in your game, then feel free to go look elsewhere. And it's just like, hold, what, I guess, I guess you're not a fucking games journalist. <laughs> like, like, give me a fucking break. So, ugh, just disappointing. 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 Uh, he had a nice short vacation with a guaranteed pay raise after he knows his business, wherever you might think of it. That's true. Yeah, I have, I have nothing but respect for the character that Dr. Disrespect has somehow managed to, uh, to, to, to fucking blow up into this crazy fucking thing. 
Well, I get crazy. Um, why am I giving Kotaku a platform? I'm like, God, you fucking got me. You fucking got me. Damn it, Zelda. Just... <laughs> You're right. You're right. I am. I'm giving him a platform. Son of a bitch. <sighs> All right. One more thing. Two more things. Two more things going on. In case you were wondering, in case you were wondering, I'm big in Kotaku's pocket. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a games industry journalist. That's what that's what we need to hear. All right. So if you guys uh are looking for something to do this weekend, there are a couple things happening that I feel I should let you know. Wrong button. First off is the super games done quick. <laughs> it's, it's really bright. This starts 9:30 a.m. on Sunday. Okay, a lot of interesting games here that you can uh, pick and choose which ones you want to watch. It says right here on the left-hand side. I'll leave these links in the, uh, I mean, it's right here, gamesdonequick.com slash schedule. So you go through and you can watch uh, uh, any one of these games that you want. They're covering a lot of games as they normally do several, several days all the way through next week, all the way through Saturday, June 29th. So that starts on Saturday. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sunday morning, June 23rd, 9.30 a.m. That's Pacific time. So please go here and it'll tell you what your start end time is so you can watch it. Thank you, Corpse. Thank you so much. The other thing that you should definitely watch and maybe just like don't go to sleep on uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, because the other thing that you should definitely watch is the GSL Code S Season 2 Finals. We're down to Trap and Dark. Zerg and Protoss, come on, baby. You got to, you got to. Fuck you, Era. Ban. You got to watch this, all right? It's, <laughs> this is a, there it goes. <laughs> uh, so I, I am personally, I am personally rooting for Dark. Um, I am hoping that dark mainly because I like trap, uh, but I like classic more than trap and classic upbeat by trap. So I, I'm rooting for dark. Dark seems like I don't really know much about dark, but he kind of seems like a G. He seems like someone you could just hang out with. Uh, and so <laughs> trap and dark sounds like specialist literature. It sounds like a subgenre for like for fucking uh, drum and bass or, or trap music. Um, Dark needs a GSL. He is a second fiddle so often. Yeah, I'm 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 rooting for Dark. I, I'm rooting for Dark uh, to complete this. Uh, this is obviously it's all Koreans because uh, GSL is the Korean based uh, StarCraft League. Um, and if you if you're interested in seeing some of your European fellows like like Cyril, uh or in a, or uh, uh, whatever, uh, if you're interested in seeing your your European folks going up against the uh, uh, the Korean competitors. You have to wait for GSL versus the world, which is August 1st. It's like the, it's, it's in August. All right. So yeah, you can watch in August, but this is going to happen. This is at 1 a.m. Pacific time on, uh, oh wait, hold on a second. Uh, next 10, hold on a second. What day is this? Let's see. Didn't... Oh no, this is tonight. Oh fuck, that's right. This is tonight. Uh so this is actually so I this will actually be over. You know what? Watch the fucking VOD, all right? Just watch the fucking VOD. I don't know what day it is, guys. I lost an entire day and a half this week, all right? I don't know what fucking day it is anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. But that's it. Yeah, it's called versus the world because uh, the Koreans are always they always beat everybody else. So um but then there's Cyril. Then there's Cyril, so we'll have to wait and see. Um Round of 30 always has a few non-Korean players. Oh yeah, usually it does. Or like special. Special gets involved sometimes. Special or uh uh who else gets involved in um in the Korean side uh, pretty often. Can't really name another one, but special has lately been 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 hitting that up pretty regularly. You actually qualify for the next season, I think. Um so yep. Yeah. Scarlet as I said, Scarlet Scarlet lives there, right? Yeah, yeah. So Scarlet Scarlet does that as well. Scarlet participates in like, I mean, and global competitions. She's, I feel like she goes basically wherever the action is. Um, and so is special, actually. So that is kind of interesting to see them play because it's a, it's kind of a different style uh, in, in, of a sorts. Um, but anyways, you know, for those of you guys who are interested in StarCraft 2, you should absolutely watch the GSL uh, finals because the shit is awesome. Shit is awesome. So that's it. 
I'm really bad at remembering SC2 player names. And it's funny because they're all so simple. I mean, like, seriously, the names are so, they're so simple. Uh, Trap, Classic, Hurricane, Hero, Dark. <laughs> like, the, <laughs> the names are always just like Patience. Like, they're, they're usually pretty basic. Uh, solar, True, Stats. You know, you feel like you should be able to remember these names. It's not it's not like some folks that have like these really complicated names. They're so simple. So it is really difficult to remember for some reason. Uh, they're American Gladiator. <laughs> they are American Gladiator days. Nitro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Uh, oh, actually, you can see right here. Uh, it, you actually, there you go. Actually, it shows right here. You have Special and Scarlet. So there you go. Yeah, they're the only ones that were non-Koreans that were competing in... Uh, it is. I think they made. Uh, I think special made it to this. Yeah, special made it to a round of sixteen. Uh, but they didn't make it out of round of sixteen. Uh, Trap and Hero. Well, Trap and Hero were in his group, so he was an impact. So he wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, although special did win. Um, uh, what was the tournament? There's so many fucking tournaments. Was it WCS something? I forget. What did well, special just won? Um, what was it last season? GS. Though? I can't remember. I can't remember. This is too much Starcraft. Anyways, that's it. Ah, Badger, Whiskey, Burrito, Eagle, Doorstop, Break Fluid. That's what would happen if it was all NA. If NA took that same naming scheme. Uh, that's it, guys. Boop. Thank you so much for watching. This is my co-host. Chat. Uncle Chat. Auntie Chat. Thank you so much for hanging out. For helping me with the news. Oh, I'm, so, I'm just glad I made it. And, uh, I guess we'll just uh, see you guys, uh, 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 later. <gasps> and...